Hello and welcome to our lecture on welded joint design. So first off, what is a joint? By the end of this module, we shall be able to describe the standard joint design types and explain and give reasons that we of why we select those joint designs. So what determines a welded joint design? Well, there's these four main areas. There are more, but we'll concentrate on these four first. So we've got design based on a fatigue life expectancy and the different loading types which we'll apply to the weld later. We'll review those in fatigue modules later on. The thickness of the material to be welded, the welding process to be applied, and any access restrictions. By understanding those at a design phase, we should be able to pick the best weld joint design for our process. Starting with butt welds and thin material, we normally start with a square edge butt. So here is two pieces of material being placed together with limited preparation. So we're not putting any other prep here apart from the square edge, uh, so a grinder or a machined edge coming together. This is good for thin materials, but as thickness increases, the ability to penetrate all the way through that metal will be reduced. So as we go up thickness, we could just start to spread the gap between the two plates and have an open butt which will allow the weld metal to start to fall through rather than be held up on the surface. But even then, these joint designs are only good to you know, limited thicknesses of material depending on the welding process. As we go up the material thicknesses, you can see we can start to produce beveled edges. Now, on the top left here, what you're able to see is a single bevel where we are only preparing one side of the material. And underneath that, a double bevel. Again, one side of the material is being prepped uh, and the second base member coming in is unprepped. Very commonly, we use a single V. So this is where we prep both sides of the material to make that V shape. And then we can also repeat that from the opposite side as well to produce a double V. Now these joint designs are probably the most standard ones we will see in production. Uh, and they cover, allow us to cover fairly large ranges of material thicknesses. Within a single V butt, we have a few different features where we can put measurements to and capture within our control documentation. Those are the angle of bevel. This is normally between 30 to 35 degrees from top dead center and influences the sidewall fusion defects that may occur. The smaller that angle, so the more we head towards zero and it be a straight unprepped edge, more likely we are to create lack of fusion defects. Because we have two sides of a joint here in a single V, we can also account for an included angle, which is two times our bevel. So if we are running a 30 degree bevel angle, our included angle will be 60. Our root face is also referred to as a nose or a tip and that influences the amount of penetration we will get within the root run. The larger that face is, the more difficult it is to penetrate all the way through the material. But if it's too thin, it's more likely that we'll get a defect called burn through, which is where the weld metal collapses and creates a large hole. And then lastly, we have our root gap. Root gap affects profile and penetration. And what it's going to do is the larger the gap, the easier it is for the materials to fall through. The smaller the gap, 
again, the harder it is for the weld metal to come through. Now looking at a different version of prepping is what we call J's and U's. So you can see from these joint designs, we have more complex preparations to complete. Normally these are produced with a facing tool or a milling head, uh, so we can get the accuracy in our results. This has increased the amount of cost, however, to produce the welded joint. Here we're looking at the single U. Again, it's just twice the J. Uh, we have very similar components to this joint design. So we still have an angle of bevel, but now that angle of bevel is much reduced. So with a single V, we were talking 30 to 35 degrees. Now we're talking two to five degrees. Again, our included angle is two times the bevel. Our root face is still influencing penetration. Our root gap is still influencing profile. But now we have two additional areas. So we have a root radius, which is the change in angle between a land which is this bottom platform and our uh, bevel. We radius this in order to make sure there's no sharp transition. If there is, there is a possibility of defects being formed at the transition point. Uh, and the land is being used to create a platform to weld onto as we fill that joint up. We said before that the more we decreased the angle of the bevel, the more likely it was we would have weld defects. So why would we go to two and a half percent, uh, two and uh, five degrees? The reason for this is this type of joint design is very good for automated welding processes or mechanized welding processes, such as orbital TIG welding way we're not relying on welder skill to catch the side walls and we can preset machines to be able to do that and reduce our risk. Now we potentially welded our joint, we can see the features of a completed weld. And these break down into some main areas which all have acceptance criteria applied to them in standards such as ISO 5817. So our first one we're looking at here is the weld toes. These are the points at which the weld metal meets the base material and these are generally need to be smooth. Now smooth is a, an, is a qualitative measurement not a quantitative measurement so it's very difficult to get a consistent answer on what is smooth and what isn't. Standards such as 5817 apply tables like this, which give angles to which that transition should be. Level D is one of the lowest quality, so that can be a 90 degree change, so that would be a fairly abrupt, non-smooth transition. And then C and B, you can see going to 110 degrees and 150 degrees. But they're difficult to measure uh, without the use of some specialized tools or a bit more of an involved measurement process. So we tend to try and standardize around the term smooth, no sharp transition. Excess weld metal is any material above the surface of the base metal. Now we normally always want the material, the weld metal to completely fill our joint. But any additional over the top of the base metal is seen as waste as it gives no additional material strength. That is based upon the material thickness in our design. Like with excess weld metal, we have excess penetration. Now, this is the amount at which we push through the material to the other side. Now, in items such as pipework and tubes, 
excessive penetration, so any above zero, may lead to issues such as stress raises at the toes of the weld. Contamination points where, especially in dairy pipes or materials that cover or uh, carry organic compounds, it will uh, catch and may rot and then contaminate the rest of the fluid. We have erosion. Erosion is the process in which we create turbulent flow with a fluid that has some abrasive materials in it and that can damage the pipe. We can reduce flow rates. So every time we come to a weld, the pipe diameter drops and the flow of material slows down. And then we have turbulent flow where the fluid is rolling down the tube instead of traveling in quite laminar straight directions. Again, this can cause issues. Surface interim fusion is very much like the toes of the weld, but these are between welds normally within a cap. So this is where we have two capping runs coming together. Again, we want those to be smooth. And lastly, we have our heat affected zone. This is an area of the base material which was heated above its critical transformation temperature, but did not melt. So it changed in its grain structure because of the heat without becoming liquid. Now this means that this area, these dark areas you can see around the weld, have a different mechanical property compared to the base material or the weld metal that we produced. And they can be positive and negative, but they are a, an area in which we're likely to see cracking. Okay, we'll talk about that failure and heat affected zone cracking in failure modes, which is another module. But here we can see that as temperature changes from a hot weld metal to a cold base material, that heat affected zone is actually made up of lots of different types of grain structures, which adds to the complexity of weld metal uh, or welded joint behavior.